Hello you plonkers and welcome back today to another video on the True Footy channel. Had to spin one way then back the other way because it's a cord mic. But nevertheless we are here to talk about the football round 11 inside. Here we go. Nine things we learnt. If you like this series and you like me talking about footy, leave a bloody like on the video and comment down below what you learnt from the round as well as just getting around the channel and me particularly. Subscribe if you're new, because why the hell aren't you not? True Footy is the best footballing platform for football content in the AFL YouTube scene. You know how it is. Let's go with the nine things we learnt from round 11. That's not two, that's 11. Number one, Sydney get a vital four points, the footy world and Carlton. Friday night footy, Sydney versus Carlton. A season ago, you'd probably say this is a massive game between two really good sides. But at the moment, it really isn't. Sydney are in pretty... Average form, so to get four points in this game was massive for them because everyone knows that Sydney have it within them to hit form and then be a really hard side to stop. Just need to get some players back into the side and it could all click for them. And Carlton, obviously, last year they were decent and now they're just absolutely dog shit. Some of the runs that the lizard Nick Blakey was doing off half back are insane. The way the man runs, bro, it's crazy. He was one of the best on ground, and yeah, as I said, Sydney, important four points. Didn't have to be pretty, just get the win, chalk it up and head into the second half of the season with a win under your belt to continue for that top eight push. Now, the football world and Carlton, I want to make a point here. Why does everyone have such high expectations of Carlton? Ever since you've watched football, have you ever looked on your fixtures and gone, shit, we've got Carlton next week, I'm terrified. No, because they've always been shit. Last time they played finals, what, a decade ago, 2013. Last time they won up, couldn't even remember, couldn't even tell you. Could we stop pretending that Carlton are a good football club? Because they're not. They've always been shit. They continue to be shit. And there's, there's no structure. There's no method. There's no bloody passion. It is all number one bullshit. Carlton, they suck. Can we move on? and learn this. They're shit. Cool. You can't just expect a vomit to Mackay and Kerno and expect them to win you games of football. Just doesn't work like that. There's just, it just seems so panicked every time you're on the ball. Every time you cause a turnover, Cole, you just looked panicked. Look up, where's Kerno? Where's Mackay? One can't kick. One's got the whole burden of our football club on his shoulders. Patrick Cripps growing, going down with injuries, not going to help the cause. I'm just bamboozled by the Colton football club at the moment. Got nothing else to say. Yeah, shit. <laughs> Number two. Sicily leads the Young Hawks to a consecutive W. Saints slipping at the bye again. James Sicily, what a game he had. 43 touches. I think like 17 intercept possessions or something ridiculous. This man led this Young Hawks side to a massive victory at Marvel against the Saints. And you look at this Hawthorne list. And it is very, 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 very inexperienced and young. So for James Sicily with all the experience that he's had, to put this young team on his back and get a win against the St. Kilda side who, on paper, you'd expect to win this game. It was massive, led by the skipper. I know it's easy to say in hindsight now that Hawthorne have won consecutive games, but for me, it was only a matter of time before they weren't absolutely dog shit. Like, they started playing decent footy. Because I feel like even last year, they showed some really good signs. And it was just sort of a matter of getting into form, played into form by playing West Coast that... It happened. They've got a great coach in Sam Mitchell. I think he'll be a premiership coach one day. And they've got that great culture. Um, then they've got guys like Sicily and Bruce leading this young list. So plenty of talent coming through. And it was a great win. Consecutive wins now for Hawthorne, uh, who are probably going to lose the race for Harley Reid if they keep playing this well. St. Kilda, it's getting a bit worrying now because this is a very similar story to last season. Started off really well get found out sort of halfway through the season, around the bye. Then after the bye last year, they just fell to absolute shit. I'm pretty sure in the last like seven weeks, they've gone win-loss, 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 something like that, something like that. I don't know my maths, but yeah, the form from earlier on in the season is far gone for St. Kilda. Ross Lyon needs a plan B because right now the plan A has been figured out. Teams know how to beat it, including Hawthorne, who a few weeks ago were considered one of the worst teams in the competition, while St. Kilda were considered one of the best. And their form is absolutely dropping like a bloody bowling ball, mate. Figure it out, St. Kilda, quick. Number three, free or the dogs bollocks. How good are the results this week? Carlton lose, St. Kilda lose, West Coast lose, Gold Coast win, Frio win. Happy days. If you're a fan of Frio, this round was fantastic. And I know people in the comments are going to go, oh, Frio bias, Frio bias. Yeah, yeah, go on, say it. 
because I am. Because I, I bleed purple. We went toe to toe with Melbourne, who are one of the better sides in the competition. I'm not saying the best, but we played them at their own game. Really high pressure, move the ball fast by hand, stoppage dominant. We went toe to toe with them and beat them. This young side again beat a very much more experienced side. In the last three weeks, we've beaten the 2021 premiers, the 2022 premiers, and the 2022 grand finalists. So. Whether they're in form or not, it shows that we are capable of beating sides who know what it takes to win a flag. To get this win after Sean Darcy goes down as well and Luke Jackson steps up into the ruck, you think, right, this is going to be tough here because Luke Jackson can't play 100% game time. He's going to have to have a break at some point. But Luke Jackson, out of the four rucks on this ground on this game, was the best by far. Gorn and Grundy definitely didn't get the better of him. Luke Jackson was the best player on the ground non-stop. Kicking a great goal as well from a stoppage where he's just so well known for his follow-up efforts. He'll tap it down, he'll tackle a player, he'll get the ground ball and then he'll kick a goal. Like, this guy is a genuine unicorn. Brayshaw, Sarong, O'Meara, they're starting to work really well together as well. And then our backs are as solid as they get in the competition. I know bias again, but like Brennan Cox, Luke Ryan, Hayden Young, they pretty much get 25 disposals, 8 marks a week. Um, and just, yeah. Don't really put a foot wrong for me. Bailey Banfield is really stepping it up as well. He's sort of just found his role and learned how to perfect it. He's added a lot of agility to his game. He used to be like a very straight line runner or he'd always take the long way around. Now he's sort of learning to step players, use the space, um, and his vision to hit up forwards is a lot better as well. Side note, Jai Amos, three goals. I think he kicked three and two in the weeks prior. Took the absolute piss, in the words of Caden McDonald, who was there at the MCG. Kicking three goals, important goals, and he's just a gun. Him versus Van Royen out of the same WA draft crop. It was good to see them go head-to-head, -head, but Amos actually got the upper hand. Things are looking really, really good for Frio. I'd say right now, power rankings, Frio have jumped up the highest. They might not be the top. They're definitely not the top. I'd say Collingwood are. But on form right now, you would not want to play Frio because we are red hot, baby. And I'm loving it like a McDonald's advert. Yep. Next. Number four. GWS earn a hearty away win against the Geelong side who aren't trying yet. Obviously, Geelong are trying. It's just a joke. But GWS, what a win this was. They came up just short last week of St. Kilda, but it was a hearty effort. But... The thing is, no one gave GWS a chance in this game because they're a small club and Geelong are the premiers, of course, at Cadinia Park, which used to be one of the hardest grounds to play in football. You just chalked this up as a Saturday Arvo Geelong win by six goals. But GWS, led by their main man, Toby Green and Tom Green, two greens, both spelt different, but they had great games as they do every week. Nothing new learned here. Toby Green is one of the most impactful players in the competition. Doesn't get as much of the ball as some other players in the game, but when he does, you know he's going to make some shit happen. Tom Green is an absolute bull in the middle of the park. And Daniel's in the forward line. What's his first name? It's definitely not Caleb Daniel. That's another small fella, but he had a great game and he's making an impact again. He had a really good season a few years ago. I used to watch him closely and he kicked three goals. Great pressure acts. Had a great game. Now Geelong... They're far from it at the moment, sitting at five and six as it stands, outside of the top eight. But the point I'm saying with they're not trying is that you just know two months down the track, once it hits round, I don't know, 17, 18, you just know they're going to be humming. They're going to have all of the players back that they need. They're going to click, and then they're just going to fly into finals uh, playing some really good footy. So I'm not too worried about Geelong at the moment, given the injuries that they have, and they're just not in good form. But Geelong just know how to turn it up when the time comes. So I'm not too worried about Geelong. Um, but yeah, what a great win this was for Adam Kingsley and his boys, GWS. Massive result. This video is brought to you by my business, Drusy's Athlete Academy, helping athletes achieve their goals. If you're an athlete looking to take your game to the next level, Drusy's Athlete Academy is all you need. When you're on the footy field trying to tackle a player down, you need strength. All of the actions within football can be improved with strength and conditioning. Whether you want to be able to run out four quarters, I can help you achieve that. Whether you want to be able to stand up in a tackle, I can help you achieve that. Jump higher, I can help you achieve that. 
The list goes on and on. As a qualified strength and conditioning coach who has trained elite AFL athletes in the past, I know what it takes to take your game to the next level. I've trained guys that you see in the league now, guys like Arthur Jones, Jacob Van Royen, and many more that are coming up through, as well as AFLW athletes. So I'm not some bloke on TikTok with a six pack that's selling some bogus programs to make some money. I genuinely want to see you progress and achieve your goals together. If you think this could be for you, I'm offering a free week trial of Druzy's Athlete Academy services. All you need to do is head over to my Instagram at druzy.athleteacademy and send me a DM saying free trial and we can get started. Druzy's Athlete Academy simply gets results every time. Don't waste your time with people that don't know what they're talking about. Druzy's Athlete Academy is the one-stop shop to take your game to the next level. Let's get on with the rest of the things. Number five, Gold Coast bursts through the glass ceiling. Here's the Gold Coast corner. Yes, my favorite moment off the show. Yes. So every week we go Gold Coast. Right, how, how are they going now? The old Gold Coast is up on the Gold Coast. Some weeks may be good, some weeks may be shit. This week, very good. In the past month or so, they've had games against Melbourne where you just you want them to just be able to burst through and win that game, but they just don't quite have it. And they, they're in the contest within the fourth quarter against Brisbane and they just fall short and then end up getting pumped. And then they're in a similar scenario again. They're leading the game against the Bulldogs. It goes into the fourth quarter. The Bulldogs get all the momentum. But Gold Coast, they hold on and get the dub in this one. Bailey Humphrey with the game-winning goal, little dribbler from the pocket. And what a season he's having in his first year in the league. He just looks like a ready-made player, like uh, a Caleb Sarong mentality-wise. When he, As soon as he came in, I just knew Caleb Sarong, he has it. And you can just see that with the way that Bailey Humphreys plays. It's just confidence and fearlessness. And talk about emerging superstars in the competition. Matt Rowe, who was the number one pick, so we expected this from him. But we're truly, truly seeing it now. He matched up against Marcus Bontempelli and beat him in disposals and clearances. Now, Marcus Bontempelli, for me, is one of the top three players in the competition. So for Matt Rowe to go head-to-head with him and come out on top and get the win... That is massive wraps. That's as big as a performance gets for me. Keep eating that grass, Matt Rao. You're doing great things. And Gold Coast, keep getting these wins. Keep building into the season. And we'll see where you're at in September. Love to see it, though. Go on, you Gold Coast. Number six, Essendon have another good win to push for finals contention. Look, don't need to talk about the Eagles here. Jesse's probably about to post another depressing Eagles video. <laughs> so, we're just going to talk about Essendon. Now, rewind six months where Essendon were. They were literally gutting their whole footballing department. Their coach got sacked. Like, they were in the pits. They were at the lowest of lows. Now, fast forward six months. They've had some great wins this year. A 50-point win against West Coast. I know it's not great, but it is a thumping. It does boost confidence within a side. They beat the Ds in Gather Round, and they broke that long run of not being able to beat Richmond. So all you can ask for your football side is to improve, especially from where they were. And I think Essendon fans right now are pretty content with how the season's going. Will they make finals? In my opinion, no. Even though they have an easy-ish run home, you've got to fit Frio, Geelong, and Sydney into the top eight. And I think out of those four, Essendon are just not as strong just yet. Bias, I know. It's just an opinion that some fella said on the internet. You don't need to get upset about it. I could be wrong. Essendon could make finals and Frio could finish in the bottom four. I don't think so, though. The fact is, Essendon, keep improving. That's all you can ask. Brad Scott's done a great job, in my opinion. They can keep building and keep pushing for finals. Number seven. Port are an anywhere, anytime side. In the past few years, the footy world has been pretty critical about Port Adelaide's away form, and fairly so. Like, when they were that top four side, that side that was sort of pushing for prelims and getting into prelims, it was always their away form that was letting them down. Like, going away to Brisbane, playing at the MCG, they just couldn't really sort of get that last piece of the puzzle to make them a genuine threat to win the premiership. I think they have that now. To beat Sydney away, to beat St. Kilda away, to beat Richmond away, to go along with their impressive home wins against Melbourne and Brisbane at home. You've got to say right now, Port Adelaide are one of those anywhere, anytime sides, which is exactly what you need if you are trying to win a premiership. And I think that is that is the missing piece of the puzzle that they didn't have a few years ago when they were pushing. Now, maybe they're a different sort of list from that time. You know, guys like Robbie Gray have gone and and others that slip my mind right now. But with the talent that they have and the current form they're displaying, there's no reason that this can't be another year where Port are playing for a spot in the grand final. I think the ceiling of Port Adelaide 
is very high right now. I rate them massively, as everyone should. They are yeah, playing some really good footy, plenty of talent. Butters continues with his great form. Finlayson just looks properly settled into this side. And they're hard to play against again. I'm keen to play Port Adelaide. That'll be a good matchup. But yeah, anywhere, anytime, Port Adelaide will put up a fight as it stands. If they can continue this mentality throughout the rest of the season, there's no reason they can't play in a prelim in 2023. Number eight, I've learned everything about Collingwood. Right, on this show, ever since it started, at the start of 2022, Collingwood have been a good side. Now, I come on here, I'll talk about, God, Nick Dacos is good. God, Jordan Ngoi, God, he's a bit of a fire starter, isn't he? He's a, he's a pretty good player, can kick the footy pretty good. God, how exciting a... Con- like, I've said it all about Collingwood at this point, and when they go to Marvel and beat North Melbourne by, like, six goals or whatever, whatever it, like, what do, you, what do you learn? What do you actually learn? I learnt nothing. And I didn't watch the game, and this is lazy analysis. Next! And uh, number nine... Adelaide are making waves fast. Did watch this game. You don't have to worry. What a performance this was from a young Adelaide Crows side. I think that Brisbane have the most stacked list in the competition. And I was speaking to Caden yesterday before this game and said, I reckon Brisbane are the favourites to win the flag. And they still could be. But I make that point to say this. Adelaide are making massive waves in the competition right now. We know that they bring the fight and the hunt, but it come to a different level in this game like every time they got shit from a Brisbane player Adelaide players all on him give him a push back we're not taking your shit we don't care who you are what players you have on your list we want it more and they simply wanted it more in this game the will to win the goals that Rochelle and Isaac Rankin kicked were taking the absolute piss Rochelle to banana it from where you sort of want to dribble it along so it curves in he just bananas it, just puts it exactly where he wants it. Rankin throws it on his left foot over his head, just perfect snap. Insane goals. Darcy Fogarty as well. Man, that kid makes an impact. I say he's a kid, he looks like he's about 35 with a mortgage, three kids, a bloody brick business where he builds houses and shoulder issues, but he, he is strong. He makes an impact. <laughs> Jokes aside, just his presence and his strength came across massively in this game. The footy that Tex Walker's been playing the last three years as well, like he's still contributing in a big way. And they've got all of these young guys that are coming through and contributing as well. Like, I can't give big enough raps to Adelaide right now. One of my favourite teams to watch in the competition, the pressure that they bring, the players that they have. Feel like they feel like their time is now. Like, they're going to push for finals. I think they'll play finals. They're, they are a top eight side. They're great to watch. So, what a season it's been for you, Adelaide Crows fans. Great football being played. Beating a massive opponent in the Brisbane Lions who are more experienced and probably have more quality on the park. But you believe in your method. You back yourselves in and you get a win. And you've made Adelaide Oval a fortress as well. So, big wraps to Adelaide Crows. And that's going to wrap up nine things we learned for round 11. But before you go please just click that thumbs up button because what it does is it helps True Footy out in the algorithm. So click like and then you can go and comment down below. That helps as well. It'll probably just ask too much of you. This could potentially be the last nine things we learned that I record in the next two months. So <laughs> so if you enjoyed this series, thanks. No, but I'm traveling Europe for the next two months. So it's just going to be virtually impossible to record these every week so i hope you've enjoyed it up to this point i will be back talking about football at some point if you want to see me continue to make videos i'll be dropping lots of travel vlogs in the next two months so keep your eyes peeled on the druzy channel for some funny good content of me and my brother having the time of our lives but if not keep it locked to the true footy channel and support jesse that's all i have to say i won't waste any more of your time i appreciate you watching and i'll see you when i'm looking at you until then take care you plonkers I just had a voice break.